you are probably anti-Semitic. Now, we've watched this bill get passed through the House, and now it's on its way to the Senate, and we will see what happens with the new anti-Semitism awareness bill, which will force the Department of Education to use the definition, working definition of anti-Semitism, backed by our government, and it threatens funding and all of that. Now, Speaker Johnson had come out not too long ago saying that they were going to threaten the funding of these campuses if these campuses did not clamp down on anti-Semitic protests and all of that. As constitutionalists, you may wonder what we believe about this, especially because we're conservative. So, you know, of course, we're those evil guys from the 1940s, which is so interesting because you've lobbed that at the right wing forever, but they're supposed to love Israel and as Christians and yet hate them as those guys. Anyways, so I think it's very important that we look at this working definition of anti-Semitism, and then I'm going to cover a little CNN article, and, and of course the spin is there. What's coming out now, of course, is that this is a whole mess, especially for the left. The establishment, the government, wants to back Israel. The problem is... They've, they've got an issue where they're donors, and it's just come out. Politico has reported that donors for Biden are some of the biggest donors for the protests. And so now you've got kind of a clashing going on of, okay, who are we going to support? And Biden knows that it's a failing issue for him to fully support Israel, but he's going to lose big money donors if he tries to support the protests. And, of course, the protests are, are making a muck of things. But the interesting thing about this whole anti-Semitism bill is it's very vague. And people have pointed this out. Several politicians have pointed out as to why they can't vote for it. But basically what it does is the obvious things are considered anti-Semitism, you know, calling for the death and all of that. But then it, it has very vague aspects of it. Um, accusing them as a people of being responsible for real or imagined wrongdoing committed by a single person or group or even acts committed by... So it's not just the, the person, individual, and putting it to the whole, but the group. It says anti-Semitic acts are criminal when they are so defined by law. For example, denial of the Holocaust or distribution of anti-Semitic materials in some countries. Criminal acts are anti-Semitic targeting, attacking people or property. Anti-Semitic discrimination is the denial to Jews of opportunity or service. Okay. It even goes as far as accusing Jewish citizens of being more loyal to Israel or to the alleged priorities of Jews worldwide than to the interests of their own nations. And there's a, a Christian aspect here that I'll get to in a second. I'm sure you guys are kind of wondering about that one if you've heard anything about this. But this one is so interesting to me. Now, if you look at a person, and now, this has been in play for a little while, but if you look at a person and say, well, you're more loyal to your home nation than us. You're more loyal to a nation because it's your ethnicity than you are to us. That could be considered anti-Semitic. And, and I'll get into the, the whole hate speech in a, th in a second, because I, I promise you I'm not missing the forest for the trees. But let's look at the Christian aspect. Using the symbols or images associated with classic anti-Semitism, e.g. claims of Jews killing Jesus or blood libel to characterize Israel or Israelis. That aspect, for you as a Christian, that's where we're getting that whole chilling effect commentary, especially because of the whole slippery slope argument. Now, they're associating the idea and, and CNN even does this, and I'll point it out in a sec. They're associating the idea of who killed Jesus as an anti-Semitism trope, which, yes, it's been used in the effect of anti-Semitism before, but is the truth the truth? CNN went after Majority Taylor Greene because she pointed this out. They said... After stating anti-Semitism is wrong, Green said in a post on X that she would not vote for the bill because the definition of anti-Semitism adopted by the bill includes claims of Jews killing Jesus, claims that she argues are true. CNN already throwing a little bit of doubt in there. 
She wrote on Acts that the Christian gospel says Jesus was handed over to Herod to be crucified by the Jews, an interpretation of the Bible that has been used historically to justify anti-Semitic attacks on the Jewish community. Notice how they're throwing doubt in there. Let's look at what the story of Christ was. The leadership of the Jews, the, leader, the, the religious elite, the religious leadership flat out said in Scripture, one man dies for the good of the nation. And they were talking about Jesus. And it was Caiaphas, a high priest, who it's even commented that this was him prophesying without realizing what he was doing. At the moment in front of Pilate, Pilate gives them an option. He says, who do you want? Because they had this whole tradition of letting one go who's about to be crucified, condemned to death, condemned to death. And he says, I could give you Barabbas. He, he had led, tried to lead a revolution. He was a thief, blah, blah, blah. Or I could give you Jesus. They chose Barabbas. They condemned Jesus to die. They had the option in their hands and they condemned him to die. Furthermore, they weren't allowed to put somebody to death. They wanted to, but they couldn't. So they brought him before Pilate and they made the claim that he was arguing he was a king and so therefore he was trying to usurp the emperor's position. This is why people say, well, they were responsible for it. Now, the Romans were responsible for it too, absolutely, but this is now being considered an anti-Semitic idea, and that's the whole crux of all of this. Your ideas, your opinions, your beliefs have now become under the microscope, and you could be considered having hateful thoughts for doing so. This whole hate speech thing, and we've talked about it plenty of times, this hate speech thing is atrocious. Because what you're doing now is policing speech. It's an end around free speech. It's an end around the First Amendment because now the government is dictating what you're going to or not say. And they're going to punish you for what you say or do not say. And this is, of course, on the college campuses. Which isn't it interesting that college campuses are so government funded, but now they're restricting speech. This bill is atrocious. This is awful. And it's all under the guise of tolerance and love. Now notice, I haven't really given my opinions on Israel or the Jewish people as a whole or anything. You'll have your opinions about where you think I line up. But the fact remains, I wouldn't support this if it were an anti-Islam bill. I wouldn't even support it if it were an anti-Christian bill. I care more about the principle of you having your liberties and being able to say what you're thinking, to hold your thoughts and be able to express them, than I do about whether or not I'm offended that you have those thoughts. Now, acts of violence, obviously, is criminal. But we've gone down this whole rabbit hole of deciding what group we're going to protect and how we're going to protect them by, well, you can say this, but you can't say that. But you could say this, but maybe not that. And Well, this one really depends on how you define it. And I want to point out, isn't it interesting how quickly both Republicans and Democrats got alongside each other in order to push this bill? And Massey and I were talking about it, and this next thought is my own. I believe it's the Jewish donors. This isn't grand conspiracy. This isn't there's a Illuminati takeover or anything like that. People work in their own self-interest. And it is proven that donors who are pro-Israel, came out against TikTok and were calling their congressmen and telling them, get rid of TikTok. Why? Because TikTok's algorithms had switched to support the Palestinian protests. There's something to be said for the power of money and influence. And if the money and influence is all saying, we're going to protect Israel, we support Israel, we, we have interest in Israel— plenty of people are going to get in line with that because they don't want their funding to go away. So do I think this is something that is very much backed by a pro-Israel movement? Absolutely. Do I think this is indicative of they run the world? No. I don't believe it. Now, you can excoriate me in the comments. Go for it. I don't care. 
Because it does me no good, it does me no service to hold on to that and spout it from the rooftops if that's what I believe. But I don't believe it. I do think there is a shift happening, and I don't like it. I don't like that there is a coalescing of anger and hatred towards the Jews. We've watched it too many times in history. I'm not white knighting for them, but it does give me pause and concern that all of a sudden on the left and the right, there are these more and more vocal parts that are, are starting their march towards it's their fault. And do you notice we're in a big economic problem right now? What better thing to start scapegoating on than a group of people that have been scapegoated on so many times in the past. And the more people see crisis and issue in their daily lives, the more they're going to look for a cause of it. And if you get a vocal enough person and persuasive enough person, you'll start winning some people of it's their fault. If you like content like this, please, by all means, subscribe. Click the like button. Let us know. Click the notification bell. We're here for you. We love you guys. Have a great day.